sip and see what we need. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Sip and Tea with Luna B. I'm your girl, Luna Billingsley. How you doing? I want y'all to say what's up to my favorite co-host, Prototype. What's up? I'm back. He's back by popular demand. I had at least about 15 people be like, oh, make sure Prototype come on. He's on. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you for having me again. Not really. Um, <laughs> I hate you too. <laughs> it's all love. It's all love. All right. So today we're going to be talking about a... Uh, oh, hey, we're going to start with um, the uh, the Migos? big the big news or the big, big news? So we're going to start with Migos, right? Okay. Don't look like I love all bad and bougie. <laughs> they look, say what? Don't look like I love all bad and bougie. What's that? Don't look like I love all bad and bougie. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, even after he said, yeah, 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 it looked like he was, he still ain't know what he said. <laughs> you, you know what they said was that they had the audio in the mic. You know, it was for the video feed, so whatever we we saw, we could hear what they were saying. Mm -hmm. But in the, I guess on the red carpet or whatever, the white carpet, the black carpet, whatever it was, they couldn't hear any. They couldn't hear shit. Wait a minute, there was a carpet there because I didn't see a carpet. Uh, it looked like linoleum. Linoleum, yeah. If that... BT could afford linoleum. Because they were sitting in folded up metal chairs there, giving off that interview. <laughs> folded chairs. Yeah. They had the church, the church chairs that you had to put back at the end of the day. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, them free lunch chairs. That's what they had. Like, I was wondering if they was going to bring out the chocolate milk. Isn't that what free lunch used to be? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about free lunch. Shout out to my mama Jo, my Anita. She used to work that stuff and love her. She always brought home the extra chocolate milk. So, shout outs for that. But, um... Yeah, so I, I was wondering, like, what was going on, like, what the dynamic between Migos and Joe Budden was. Like, I could see DJ Academics was like, yo, I'm a big Migos fan, yo, I love these dudes, but really ain't know too much about them. So that, that was crazy to me, and, and it said Joe Budden had made a statement saying that they give off dry interviews. Yeah, so from what I heard was that, alright, so, so Joe had some issues earlier on in the day with some other people, with some mm -hmm. other artists and stuff, mm -hmm. Little Boat. <laughs> boat. and his manager right mm -hmm. so um uh, yeah he, he he had also said that he did not want to do an interview with the meagles because they gave dry interviews he had seen some before and um he didn't think that they would fit right in you know um the content of complex's programming i don't understand how that is because they you know they do those types of rappers all the time anyway right so they get to the bt awards they're doing all the interviews and um Academics fanboys out. He, go, he goes full, full retarded fanboy. Oh my God, it's the Migos! <laughs> and so, um, I he, swear nobody really he, knows anybody on there except for Quavo. Quavo, take, take off. Was it take off and hazmat? <laughs> I don't even know. Like Quavo, take off and hazmat. That's what I'm gonna call. They sound like a like an '80s reject rock band. Yeah. Like each of their names sound like the name of a rock band. Quavo. Reminds me a little bit of Quavo, though. Like, right. I don't really know. They get to the carpet, and Joe had been given all the interviews. Nadeska and Academics were silent the whole time. I guess they were starstruck. Mm -hmm. 20 interviews go past. They, they get to the Migos. All of a sudden, Academics wants to ask all the questions. And Joe sits back, and that's when, you know, he starts giving you that the scrunched up neck face. <laughs> the old man neck face. Yeah. He does. He wants it to end. So he's trying to get it to end, and meanwhile, in the background, Little Boat's people is still harassing him about the stuff, the incident from earlier in the morning. So Joe's just aggravated. For all those people who don't know, Little Boat is Little Yachty. <laughs> <laughs> Little Boat. <laughs> Little Boat. <laughs> so that's when he said, we got to cut this short. It, everybody, the, the tension starts to rise, because nobody, everybody knows that nobody likes anybody. Right. At that moment, it just starts, it just starts going left. Right, but um, that that was the backstory to it, and then you guys saw the rest with the mic drop and the walk off and the the we'll wrap it up, the step up. What they said, Migos look like um, uh, uh, the Dave Chappelle skit. Oh, uh, yo, Prince. Prince, yeah, shirts and blouses. <laughs> yeah, they were the blouses, definitely. Game, <laughs> blouses. <laughs> Game. That's terrible, because <laughs> they really did, and it's like they, they, they stood up, like one after another, Quavo was their leader, 
So he stands up, and then after Quavo stands up, there's our Ratchet in Hazmat. It stands <laughs> up in order, so it's like, all right, well, what's really about to go on? Because I kind of felt bad for Quavo because he's like really skinny, and I didn't think that he really had a chance to to defend himself properly. They they are like eighty pounds wet. Yeah, that it just seemed awkward to me. Like, and then Joe Budden, he's like everybody's dad there. He's like old enough to be everybody's dad there, and he really has no business. <laughs> sitting there catching his attitude with these little kids on there but then like i also listened to charlamagne and god on the breakfast club shout out to charlamagne i love him because he speaks what's on his mind and even though he get jumped like seven days out of the week uh -huh. like he really uh -huh. still speaks his mind he's like and he I, gets jumped and still talks shit. that's <laughs> right and you could be right in front of his face like real angry but put some respect on my name he's still gonna talk his shit. like he's still gonna be charlamagne and that's what i respect about him but he said that all that stuff that Joe Budden has said in his interview, he could have said that to Migos' face. And I agree with that. Like, if you feel like they give off bad interviews, you should have been like, bruh, bro, bruh, whatever. I don't want to do this interview because you're dry. They dry. They need to invest in a, a translator or something. They should have used that $1,000 that they <laughs> donated. <laughs> And got uh, speech and got, therapy or and something. got Rosetta Stones. <laughs> yeah, like I feel bad, but you know what I mean. I rock with certain Migos songs, like I definitely do. So I can't Which really one? say here. Which one? Um, handsome and wealthy. Okay, I know yeah. that. I know the name. Don't know why I, I can't in this club. With oh, that's you, that's Migos. Girl. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I don't, I'm not. I'm I'm the old man Joe Button. <laughs> I don't know. I don't listen to it. I don't listen to these guys. It's okay. I listen to anything with a good beat. So I can clean up my house or read a book or do my job. Whatever the case may be. So, yeah. All right. I'm going to let you. He, he did oh. a review okay. on the Jay-Z album, 444. Oh, boy. And it, it was really good. Like, he even picked up the cat and was rocking with the cat. Oh, you see the cat? Yeah, you seen the cat. I like, wanted to work. I still had cat hair on me. He was big. <laughs> like, definitely Blig doing it like in the beginning of the of the video with him doing a review you can see like he's sober but by the time it get in the middle you're like yo he's getting a little tipsy <laughs> and then when it gets to the end you're like you already know like he's 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 drunk full blade drunk in love full blade terrible Get but blade responsible I'm gonna turn it over to him so he can give his opinion on the 444 album go ahead so I I don't listen to Migos but what I do <laughs> listen to is 90s hip hop and a lot of it and this okay so um there was a line that jay-z said a few albums ago where he said you don't like my my you like my old shit buy my old albums he went back and he made an old album and that's a good thing this thing is a total 180 from from magna carta uh holy grail um produced mainly or uh, produced entirely by um um why, why do I forget the producer's name now? That's a shame. Because you was Blake, and you're not Blake now, <laughs> no, so... No, no ID, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye's mentor, <laughs> no ID. Um, and this album is something that we've never seen or heard from Jay-Z before. Because he's vulnerable, he's honest, and it's introspective, and it's, it's, it's way more conscious than anything he's ever done. He's had songs like um, Song Cry. Right. Um, I mean, there's few and far between, like, the songs that he actually goes into, like, uh, his emotional spectrum and, and life in general and stuff like that. Right. But this thing covers, it covers a lot. And to be, what, 47? 47 years old. 20 plus years in the game, 13 albums later, and you're making a, you're spitting fire on the 13th album, it's, it's something to be said. Yeah. Well, like um, you said, it, he was vulnerable, yeah, because it's pretty much like his response to Beyonce's Lemonade. So he's like, um, I apologize for Becky with the good hair and like I almost messed it up. And it took my daughter for me to see like how I'm supposed to treat a woman and how a man is supposed to love a woman. Like I, I, I definitely dig that, the message of that album. And um, I actually rock with it more than what I rock with Lemonade. And don't none of you may have people will come for me neither because I clap back <laughs> super hard. You don't want it. I said it. I mess with 444 harder than I do lemonade. I only listen to two lemonade songs. 
the internet is a funny thing, right? Because she dropped Lemonade. Mm -hmm. It was the controversy of Diddy, Diddy cheat, what happened? Is it just for publicity or whatever? Right. And then Jay-Z comes out with this and they're saying, it's a response. She's responding, finally. They live in the same house. Well, really, he's just confirming. It's they just not had responding. twins. That's right. It's, people it's, were turning it into a battle. Right. It's it's not who's right or who's wrong or who did this or who did that. It's like more growth on this man's album. He's more or less letting you know, like, family is important. You know, back then when he was doing everything else from, like, um, the blueprint and everything else, he was rapping about um, stupid stuff. Like, the stupid stuff that people mumble about these days. But now he's talking about finances. Um getting your family right houses and investing in your own family like it that's that's what he's talking about now and i appreciate that a lot i definitely do that's probably why i rock with this album harder than i have any other album pearl for real i'm uh i'm ready to say that it's um because they say it's uh you can't tell a classic album you know from the first couple of listens mm -hmm. it's only been out for three days mm -hmm. um I'm not going to say that it's a classic album, mm -hmm. but uh, subjectively, I put it in my top three Jay-Z albums of all time. I'm ready to say that. Okay, cool. I'm ready to say that much. Yeah. Reasonable Doubt, the first Blueprint album, and 444 are Jay-Z's three best albums. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Let the trolls come. Come for me, trolls. They go, they're going to come. I'm, they're definitely going to come. But they're going to attack me first. They're going to sting me with all the little bee stings and stuff. Because you want to taste better than Jay-Z? No. But she was dope as heck mm. on his album with them, though. Like, they make great music together. They, they She won her Grammy for Eliminate, right? Mm -hmm. He's going to win a Grammy for this. He better. Shout outs to the, to the psychiatrist. Yeah, he better because, but they they really make great music together. So, Jamie Foxx actually has this show coming out, and it's called um, Can You Beat Shazam, I think, or something like that, where they play like a nanosecond of a song, and you're supposed to name that song and win right. some money. Now, now I know they're coming out with just any goddamn thing to put on TV. I, I don't want to beat Shazam. I don't. I actually don't even use Shazam. Yeah, it's like, a, it's literally a game show based off of an app. Right. I'm more or less like Alexa. <laughs> what song is playing? <laughs> and she tells me if I don't know it. <laughs> and it's normally like the songs I I need help with from Alexa. Songs from like the '60s or maybe the '70s or whatever. Like, I'm I'm definitely into old school. I like old school songs. Yeah, that's I mean, you grew up listening to old school in your in I grew household. Up, that's you know, right. I grew up you listening get a, you to get a Elvis. Get leg up on the competition. <laughs> right. I grew up listening to Elvis. I grew up listening to Prince. I grew up listening to what's his name, Luther Vandross, Anita Baker, Tony Braxton when she sounded like a man. Um, I grew up listening to Bass and Bougie. You, you grew up listening to what? I grew up listening to Bass and Bougie. Wait a minute, you grew up listening to what? I grew up listening to Bougie. Okay! <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. But yeah, definitely. Like, um, I have a very blended family. Like I already stated, my, my mix is insane. But we have a very like blended family, so I listen to all types of different things growing up. And I think that's um why you and I differ on a music front and stuff. Because when I play something, you're like, y'all, you like that. Like, 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 yeah. Well, you like a lot of trap music. I, I do. I like Shout Out the Future. Oh, favorite man. trap. That's my favorite trap his, artist. His son playing football with another man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you yeah, yeah, you, you, you know, catch that line? Did you catch that line? Dude, stop playing. See, oh, you, you, you're, you're, you're you like know. you're a conscious artist, right? So it's y'all job to sit there and pay attention line. to it and rip it apart. All, all he had to do was apologize to Solange. Okay. <laughs> That's terrible. That's so terrible. But anyway, I'll sharp and taking selfies. Yeah, like I think his arm probably broke by now, or he's still in the bathroom in that same pose, waiting for his arm to snap. That's terrible with him. <laughs> that that's so terrible. <laughs> they said he was hacked. <laughs> they said he was hacked. They said he was hacked. They said he was he was taking those selfies for who? For a project. And somebody what project bundled up? <laughs> like what project was he ta possibly <laughs> taking those selfies for? <laughs> He, he, he obviously monetized something. He doesn't do anything without getting paid for it. 
He took those selfies and he was he was ready. He had a job. He had a purpose. He didn't get hacked. You know what? That's that Facebook bullshit too. Like when some when a tough guy or whatever put on some bitch shit on Facebook and post some stuff like you know oh uh, I miss my bae or whatever and they'll they'll be like oh man never mind that I was hacked or them them <laughs> them single desperate ones be like hacked by bae but they're really bae. <laughs> Get out of here. It's really bae. But he's really bae. Like, I'm not listening to that stuff, whatever. Al Sharpton was not hacked. Like, I would I would have believed it had he not taken several selfies. If he have took one selfie and he got leaked, I'd have been like, yeah, that old man was hacked. He don't know what he's doing. Or if he took pictures with a flip phone, I would have thought, like, maybe, phone. yeah, I would have thought um, maybe, yeah, he got hacked. Nah, he did that on purpose. And now we see that everybody's, like, clowning him about it. He's like, I got hacked. If he took those with a flip phone, he's super dedicated because you can't see yourself in a flip phone. Hack that bay. His angles are incredible. It's terrible. <laughs> Best selfie taker ever. Hack that bay. That that shit is so sad to me. Like so sad. <laughs> so sad. But no, like I really um all right, I wanna talk about dating real quick, okay? Mm. Because like, um Alright. <clears throat> you and I met doing shows and stuff with each other right yeah. you know actually we met when you sent me your music for my first compilation album that i put out and we just stuck right stuck like glue like that and we still here rocking strong <laughs> <laughs> but um it's an incredible mixtape too there's like five of them yeah five and five and a half actually because it's a Oh, yeah, five and a half of them. And they're actually all pretty good. All local talent, not all from PGH, but we have some from Texas and New York. And where's the, where's the rest of them at? Florida. Mm. Yeah, so um, it, they, they did pretty good. But back to the dating thing. Okay. okay so I get asked dating, dating advice, and I don't know why people seem to think that I know anything about dating. Because 90% of the time I'm like, this fool better not touch me. <laughs> like don't put your hand on my shoulder look don't even talk to me or whatever i'm i'm that person 90 percent of the time I, I love my i'm in my bubble well like you're, you're like the dear abby type dear you're abby advice, yeah. oh gosh abby don't live here <laughs> <laughs> dear watermelon mina dear luna dear Where? dear watermelon lena <laughs> Yeah, so I was going to the barber shop and I was about to use the ATM to get the money off my EBT and I seen Ra Ra but he was playing me but I know Ra Ra liked me because he had sent me a smiley face emoji and I'm like yeah he wanted it but then we in, pu in public he act like he don't want it. What I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I thought you sounded like when I first saw your pictures. What? My pictures look like I'm ratchet? Yeah. It was. No. <laughs> no, way. you don't look like you. you look like you're ratchet. You look like you sound. Like you no know. way. That's terrible. <laughs> oh man, that's a shot right there. There's no way that that sound like that. I can't. I can't even sound like that for real. For real. You that's just terrible. Did. You, you just raised the bar on it. Right. It took a lot for me to do that too. But you know, that's what you get when you ride around Homewood and shit like that. You see all that stuff. So it's like, okay, you know. But anyways. Um, so, like, people ask me all the time about dating and, you know, relationships and friendships and stuff. I don't know if you guys ever seen my My City Says or whatever. I said relationships is a lot of hard work, and I did not even go in on it. I, I didn't even elaborate on it. I'm still not going to elaborate it. I'm just going to say it's a lot of hard work. But when it comes to the dating apps, the problem is when you can't really find somebody on there is because not everybody on these apps are being truthful. They're not being truthful about what they're looking for, right? If you want to just hang out, aka fuck, just say I'm trying to fuck. If you're really looking for love, then you'd be like, I'm looking for love. And there's a difference between actively looking and desperately seeking, mm -hmm. right? You stay away from those people that says desperately seeking. That's because they want to get married right then and there and have a baby the next day because they're they're older they feel like their biological clocks is ticking and they're freak they're insane stay away from them <laughs> stop it just run run desperate equals crazy run that's the only thing i can say okay. run but somebody that's actively seeking is just somebody that's really out there like weighing their odds and stuff and trying to find that right person for them i don't know if it's for the moment or for the long haul but they're 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 cool. Give them a chance. But then there's this thing called catfishing now, 
And that's my problem, because a lot of people be like, that's not you. You're, you're a catfish. And that's terrible, because here I am, like, it's me. Why do I have to prove it? They're like, take a picture of patting yourself on the head and send a video with you rubbing your tummy or something like that or whatever. Y'all too <laughs> extra, because ain't nobody worth that shit for me, like, at all. That's that's horrible. Where did but, the term come from? So is it like you like you know you put up a picture of a salmon, and then when you meet them in real life, they're a catfish or? Um, I have no idea where that term came <laughs> yeah, from. Because catfish is ugly than a muff. Right, but you put but, up a picture of catfish, I'll be like, no. Right, but catfish now is a forty-three-year-old fat white man named Wilbur in his mom's basement, but put up a <laughs> picture of this very hot female, Play like she's and lit. Yeah, playing Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons and stuff, um, preparing people's taxes, but <laughs> but it's really a man, and it's a, he has a woman's picture up there, and he corresponds with other men as this woman. I don't even, I don't really get that, and and females do it too, like they put up a better version of herself or something that they think that they should look like, and put it up there, and then when you meet, it's like. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. You, you you still want to go out? Cause <laughs> I got that's, some Burger King coupons. That's when you that's when you got the fake call on on the on the line like oh I gotta go help my um my cousins um peoples right uh move some furniture <laughs> right and if somebody is constantly texting you and they don't call you or or FaceTime you or Snapchat you then not who they say they are. So just stay away from them. That's definitely another sign of a catfish. Or if they're like in Africa or something or India and are asking you to send money, uh, it's a catfish. I think I hit with that a couple times. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah they'd, be yeah, like, yeah. they'd be like, please, all yeah. I need is $500 and I can come to America to see you. And then next thing you know. So that's a prostitute. <laughs> Cause like five hundred dollars for you to come they to America. Positive. They taking that five hundred and going to hit somebody else up in the village next next. But they're coming to see <laughs> me though, right? Supposedly they're coming to see me for five hundred dollars. So it's a prostitute. I don't think I want to pay five hundred dollars for, for five, anything. For one payment of five hundred dollars, you two can feed this prostitute. Right. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't think I want to spend five hundred dollars on a person for something like that because, no, it's no. It's, it's, no, you shouldn't have a price on your body, like, for real, it's terrible, but some people do, I'm, I'm, I'm priceless. I'd say so. That's that off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm priceless, but the next subject that we wanted to talk about was actually local support by local artists. Right. That's the subject that we wanted to talk about, so... I'll let you say your part because I have this little funny thing that I have to say. Well, I don't, I don't know exactly where you want to go with it. So. I want to go with, all right, so I'll tell my story then. Okay. Damn you. So I'll tell my story <laughs> then and then we'll talk about it. So my story is, is like, I'm not going to use any names, but from my description, people in, the, people in the city would probably know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So anyways, um, there was this one guy that... I was trying to help out, like he's been in, a, been in business for a long time, he was telling me he's been doing this for 15 years, and he wasn't getting any support, any love from like the local scene or anything like that. And he also had like a clothing store, slash studio, slash green room, slash whatever the fuck else you want to call it, he got a lot of slashes with this one little spot. Mm. But, I mean, the stuff that he sells is pretty much catered for like strippers. Right? Somebody like me, I'm not going to walk in a store and be like, oh my gosh, I have to have that. No. I wouldn't even, I'd look in the window for like 2.5 seconds and already know that's not for me. So like he's just catering to just one type of person. When I told him he needs to mix it up, but he doesn't want to listen. So he's selling stripper clothes out of the studio? Out of the, out of the green room, the studio. <laughs> out of the green room. <laughs> he's selling it out of everything. <laughs> but he also does music, which is weird to me but he also does music and then like he goes and spams everybody watch this watch this watch this watch this or listen to this listen to this listen to this listen to this but he doesn't in return he doesn't show anybody else any type of support mm. and then gets mad and be like oh no no I don't know if I can do his accent because he's from um, Trinidad or something like that 
oh nobody supports me Luna I just don't know what to do I've been doing the same thing for 10 years now and nobody supports me so I say you need to support other people before you can ask for support in return right, right. if you can't name a local artist and one single track from them you're doing wrong because you, you can't be making music within the city or any other city and right. not know another local artist right and not show support so that like i tried to tell him this whole thing but since i'm a female you don't know a thing you don't know what you're talking about luna wait if he if, if you don't know what you're talking about then why ask you for help right okay. but i but i do know a thing or two Right, I do know a ting or two. You know a ting? A ting or two. I've been in this, I've been in this thing for like what, six years maybe. So I know what it takes to to get there, and and then I also know what happens when you like let other people like do shit for you, whatever, and you get you caught in the corner, and then you gotta work your way out because of somebody else's mistakes, but because you were linked to them. So I, I know how this stuff goes, but. What it boils down to is you cannot be a local artist in a city and not know another one or not show love to another one. All it takes is a simple listen and a simple share. That's all it is. Right. But you can't just put music out or make a video. I don't care how much money you spent on this video or how little you spent on this video. You can't just put it out and then just start spamming everybody with it mm. and think that everybody is going to show you love when you never show love. Right. Right. I agree. I agree. I totally agree. There's um there's there's a mutual respect thing and um especially when you deal with the local circuit because there's no machine to push you. Mm -hmm. You don't have any backing by any major corporation, your funds are usually limited mm -hmm. and so you're doing all the footwork yourself, you and your you and your crew. So you have to um you have to go out and meet people and talk to mm -hmm. them and hook up with other artists and you know go to shows that you just see on the fly like just check it out and you know, it doesn't hurt to spend like five dollars or ten dollars or twenty dollars whatever the case may be it doesn't hurt to go out there and sit there and just listen to these local shows because there's a lot of talent within this city you know and, and it's all different i don't just go and pay attention to the hip-hop scene